all right hey guys welcome back to my channel thanks for being here tuning in sorry my hair's a mess um and my makeup isn't i just got home from school from teaching and so i thought i would film a quick video because it's been like uh two months <laughs> something like that since i filmed um my family has been like when are you gonna film again uh just whatever all right so anyway today i thought me and my hot mess self would film a quick um favorite brushes because i've had a few people request a i've had a few people request a video like that so i thought i would go ahead and um film that for y'all so it's gonna be super quick super simple super easy i'm just gonna fly through them so yeah i guess we'll go ahead and get started um, my favorite is a beauty blender. This is um, one from a trio set. I have a whole little jar of them back here. I just keep these on standby. Like I said, I have a whole jar. I just keep a bunch of these because I go through them. Um, I try to be really good about replacing them every three months because it is a sponge. It can hold like mold um, and bacteria because you're constantly getting it wet. Um, but my absolute favorite is a beauty blender. I recommend spending the extra money on a beauty blender. I personally feel like it blends my makeup, makeup out better. Um, they're softer. There's just something about the way that a beauty blender blends out my foundation that I love. My concealer, hands down my favorite. But if you're looking for a more affordable option, if you don't want to spend the $20 on a beauty blender. Um, I do like the, this is a Real Techniques and it's disgusting because th these are hard to clean. These are harder to clean than the beauty blenders, I think. But sponges in general are hard to clean, in my opinion. Um, the best thing to clean them is hotel soap. I stand by that. It's the best thing. But this is the diamond sponge from Real Techniques. It's like funky. And the funky shape is a little different to blend out. But these are more firm than an actual beauty blender. So I don't feel like they do as good of a job. But they are good if you're wanting to save a few dollars. I do prefer the diamond sponge to the orange one. Something about the orange one I'm not a fan of. I used to be, but I'm not anymore. Um, I also recently bought the... It's dirty because I used it today. Um, this is the Morphe shape. It's like meant for highlight and contour but I use it for foundation highlight whatever um, but this is the morphe sponge this gets a lot bigger than a beauty blender and I do like this it is it's okay it's like the real techniques they're good and I'll buy them if I just need something quick if I'm out on the road and I can't get to a Sephora these are at Walmart or Ulta not the morphe but the real techniques but I do really prefer a beauty blender for my foundation, the other thing I like to use is my Clarisonic um, brush head. If you already have a Clarisonic, just buy the foundation brush head. It's amazing. It blends things out beautifully. Um, but if you don't want to spend the money on this, I really think a beauty blender does just as good. But if I want to use a brush, this is the one that I reach for. I love this. Next, to set my face, I typically do set like my under eyes where I put concealer with the sponge, with the damp sponge. But um, if I'm going in with a brush, this is the one I use. I don't know if it'll focus. It's really fluffy. It's like huge. It's gigantic. This is the Morphe E41. This came in the Jaclyn Hill brush set with Morphe. I love this brush just to put on powder because it's so big it's so big it just does a really good job of covering my face very quickly and effectively so I really do enjoy that as a powder brush um next to put on my bronzer I prefer to use a duo fiber brush this is a Revlon one um it just says Revlon blending um, you can get these from MAC, from Morphe. There's other drugstore brands that carry them. This was expensive for a drugstore brush. Um, but it's really good and I really like it. Um, but I just like this to buff on bronzer really lightly. Um, because bronzer isn't something you want a whole lot of. You want your contour more to like 
contour your face and you want your bronzer more to just make you look like you've been to the beach and you're all tan. So this is what I use for bronzer, a stippling brush. Um, but for contour, I prefer this brush. This is again a Morphe R10. Um, and this is perfect to fit right in there where I want to contour and then place the product and it blends it out really well too. Um, I do love this. It's too big for my nose so I use something else. I'll show you in a minute to do my nose. Um, but this is perfect for me for contouring and I love it. It's like pinched but it's thick. It's just it's perfect. It's perfect. Um, now to contour my nose I use something more like this. This is a MAC 217 or a Morphe R33. They're the same shape. But this is perfect to just contour your nose. So I don't do that every day when I'm feeling fancy and extra and I want to do that. This is what I would use for that. Um, for blush, oh, this is, oh gosh, the names are, this is a Merle Norman face number five brush. Merle Norman face number five. Um, any angled blush brush, and I think a synthetic, so the darker hair, um, is better for blush, personally. Um, I just feel like it blends the product really well. I typically have found that with a natural hair, the white hair brushes for blush, my blush can get kind of streaky. So I do prefer a synthetic hair brush for my blush. <laughs> That's a tongue twister. Um, but I love the angled shape of this. I feel like it doesn't put too much product in one spot. It's angled perfect for my cheek and it just buffs it out beautifully. So I highly suggest a synthetic angled brush for your blush. <laughs> All right, and for highlight, y'all, I used to use a whole bunch of different brushes for highlight. But this brush has replaced all of them. This is my favorite. This is the Anastasia A23 brush. I know Milani has a dupe. I would like to buy that one as well because I think it's like $10 and this one's like $20 something. Um, and I like this brush, but if the Milani one works just as good, why not? Um, but this just deposits product beautifully and then blends it out as well. I really do like this brush. I think it's a smash hit. Thumbs up for me. For my eyes, I use a whole bunch of different brushes. So this is where the majority of everything's gonna be. But for my eyes, to buff my eyeshadow initially into the crease, and for like school days, this is what I use my entire eyeshadow look for. Um, but this is the Morphe R37. Y'all, this brush is the fluffiest and softest brush. It doesn't shed on me. I know a lot of people say that Morphe brushes shed, but I haven't had that issue with this one. Um, I love this to just buff color into the crease, pop a little bit on the outer corner. This is fabulous. I, like I said, I love it. Um, it's the perfect shape. It's the perfect size for my eyes. This is my favorite blending brush that I have. When I want to do a little bit more detail work in my crease and deposit more color on that outer corner or in the crease, I go for that nose contour brush. I have several of these. I have like, sorry, I have like four or five of these brushes because I love them so much. Um, I have the Morphe one, which is the Morphe M433. And it's like inexpensive. It's like four to seven dollars. I don't know. But it's a good blending brush. And then this one, which is like the OG, this is the MAC 217. Um, they both work really, really well. I will say, if you're really rough when you wash your brushes, um, the Morphe one does not hold its shape as well as the MAC one. Um, but they are the same shape. The Morphe one's a little bit longer, um, but they do the exact same thing. So if you're looking to pinch some pennies, go with the Morphe. The last blending brush that I'm going to mention that I use for my crease is the Morphe M506. And this brush is perfect for getting a little bit more color right where you want it because it's super small and precise. But I also love this brush if I am um, smudging out liner. 
I use this brush to pick up a little bit of shadow and go over it. It's perfect for that um, because it is so small and precise. Um, but it's a great brush. So, and it's a blending brush. It's super fluffy. I love this. Again, it's the Morphe M50. This is the brush that I use all the time for my lower lash line. This is a Smashbox um, brush, and this came in my full exposure eyeshadow palette. Um, but I use the pencil brush side, pencil brush side to uh, do my lower lash line. This is the perfect size, and it blends things out perfectly. I do not use another brush for my under eye, for my lower lid eyeshadow. Um, I haven't found a pencil brush that I love as much as this one. This is my favorite, and I, it came in a palette. So, um, I don't think you can buy this on its own, but if you can, I'm sure it's just the Smashbox, Smashbox pencil brush. Um, when I am using a shimmer shadow all over my lid, and I really want to pack that shimmer on, um, I use a flat, like, dome-shaped brush. Um, this is the Merle Norman face number six brush. Sorry. Royal Norman face number six. Um, I've had this for ages. Um, but it is a flat synthetic haired brush and it is perfect to pop shimmer on the lid. Um, another option is the Luxie 211. This is considered to be a concealer brush, but it does the same thing. It's flat and it's perfect to pop shimmer on your lid. Um, I also know that MAC has one. I think it's like the MAC 242. That brush. I think that that's what... Yeah. That's what is on your... Uh, that. The MAC 242 is another great option. I personally don't have it. Because I have these and these work just fine. Um, for matte shadows on my crease. When I'm really trying to pack the pigment on. Aggressive. When I'm really trying to pack the pigment on my lid with a matte shadow, um, this is my favorite brush to do that. This is the MAC 239. Um, and it is like the 217, but shorter bristles and more dense, more uh, firm. And it really just packs that product on your lid. So like I said, this is perfect for packing on matte eyeshadow. <sighs> and then for my Natasha Denona eyeshadows, before I bought my Natasha Denona, before I bought my Natasha Denona eyeshadow palette, I did a whole lot of research, watched a whole lot of tutorials to decide which palette I would work that would work the best for me. Um, before I decided on the green brown 28 pan palette, um, but in a lot of Natasha Denona's videos she talks about um, her shadows are pressed a certain way and the things that she uses to make her shadows they work best with something like this she called it a shader brush she has one um, I like I said I looked at the videos and she showed off the brush and I was like I have something similar to that so I'm not gonna buy hers um, but basically what it is is it's like the other it's like a combination of the MAC 239 where it the shape of it where it's kind of fluffy and thick and dense um, if that makes sense fluffy thick and dense and it has that dome shape but it's synthetic like the ones for shimmer shadow um, and it's huge <laughs> I don't really know another way to describe it this is the Royal and Lane Nickel BOM 40 shader brush. I got it in a boxy charm. this brush. Um, and like I said, it's perfect. What you're supposed to do in those shadows with this brush is press it firmly into the shadow and then wiggle. Um, and that's the best way to pick up the product and then do the same thing on your eyelid. Press it and wiggle. Um, and it does work beautiful. It works so much better than with your finger and those Natasha Denona eyeshadows. Um, and it works better than any of those other brushes that I've mentioned. Um, if you are going to spend the money on a Natasha Denona palette, I highly suggest getting a brush like this or investing in her brush like this um, because it really does affect the application and the quality of her product. Alright, and then my last two brushes and then I have one product I guess to mention. 
Um, this is a Morphe M432. This is just, I just almost whacked my eyeball out. Um, this is a flat definer brush and this is what I use to um, put product right up against my lower lash line or if I want to do powder liner because it's lighter than actual cream liner um, I will put it on this brush and then um, line my lash line um, and that's what I use it for I like it a lot of beauty youtubers that you watch are gonna have a brush like this um, and that's what they use it for too and then my last brush to mention and I want more of these. I think I'm going to order like two more of these because they're probably like $3. I don't know. But um, it's the tiniest little brush. It's so cute. This is the Morphe M213. And this brush is perfect. Perfect in size. To highlight the bridge of my nose. To highlight my inner corners. And then to highlight my brow bone. Perfect size. Like amazing. Um, this again came in the Jaclyn Hill set. Most of my Morphe brushes did. Um, but this brush is amazing because it, like I said, it fits perfect right there to deposit that shadow. And it's in the shape of one of those little concealer packing brushes meant for shimmer shadow. So it does the job like no other. It's amazing. Can't complain at all. I love it. Anyway, the last thing I'm going to talk about is the, um, it's a lash applicator. Um, and this one's just from Sephora. It was like $12. I know Tarte has one. A lot of brands have one. Um, but essentially what this is, is it holds the lash a little bit better. Um, because it's like longer than tweezers. Um, it's got more space up here to hold the lash. Um, and it holds it very securely. And with this, I just hold it in here, wave it around, let it get tacky, the glue get tacky. And then it is so easy to just literally pop on the lash and call it good. Um, I've always just used tweezers and I still use my tweezers to get the inner and the outer quarter really secure, really press those in. I know that probably made some of y'all nervous with me moving my tweezers towards my eye. But um, I still use my tweezers for that. But this has really helped me hold on to a lash and make sure that they don't go flying anywhere. Um, it's an inexpensive tool to really help your lash application. I know a lot of people have asked me um, for a lash application video and I will do that. It just might take some time. Um, I haven't been wearing lashes recently. My It's allergy season. It's spring in Arkansas. Um, and everything's blooming. And so my lashes my lash line my eyes are really irritated and my lash line has been more irritated recently too i don't know if i need to get a new glue or what get a latex free glue um but i will get around to that but anyway i really think this tool has helped me um and i highly suggest it or a tool like it love it um and then i guess you could throw tweezers in there but surely everybody has tweezers um, and I guess this isn't really, I guess I mentioned, I'll mention this too. Um, this is a facial hair trimmer and no, it's not because I'm hairy. <laughs> um, I am the normal amount, I have the normal amount of hair that a human should. Uh, but, um, I have been watching some beauty YouTubers and a lot of them were talking about how they were um, using a facial trimmer to shave their peach fuzz off their face. And I was like, oh, but will it grow back? And I watched this girl and she did several videos about how it doesn't grow back any different. It just grows back the exact same. It doesn't grow back darker or anything. Um, and I know a lot of people aren't into this and that's totally fine. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. Like, I don't care what you do with your life. Um, it's just what I do and it's a suggestion um, but my I use this trimmer every two weeks maybe less than that maybe once a month but I just go through and I trim the facial hair off the bottom of my face um, mostly on my cheeks I get my sideburns the way that I want to, my sideburns <laughs> I'm a man I get this area right here because it tends to get pretty fuzzy um, 
and then I'll trim up right here in between my eyebrows so that I can go longer without waxing because this area doesn't get so bad. It's more just the middle. Um, but got this at Walmart, relatively inexpensive. It just uses a battery, uses a AAA battery. Um, and y'all, when I tell you that your makeup will apply completely different when you do that, it's no joke. Like your face is so smooth um, and you don't have that extra hair holding product and getting all, um, like basically just holding that product. You use less product. Your face looks less cakey, more um, seamless and smooth. It's incredible. I can tell a major difference from when I don't shed, like if the end of the two weeks or the end of the three weeks or month or however long I wait. Um, there's a major difference between the day that I don't do it and then the day after I do it. Huge. Um, like I said, if you're not into it, don't do it. Um, but if you're, if you've been thinking about it, I highly suggest it. Just, I highly suggest it. Recommend 110%. It's amazing. Um, and like I said, it's just, I mean, it's not like aggressive or anything. It just moves and just trims that hair. Um, so easy. So worth it. Um, but anyway, that's going to do it for this video. I hope y'all enjoyed. Um, I really tried to get rid of any fluff, any brushes that I only use for specific looks or anything like that. I tried to, sorry, that was my phone. I really tried to just include the brushes that I would travel with if I was traveling um, and the brushes that I use every day, like the brushes I use all the time um, to really get rid of the fluff. So I hope y'all enjoyed. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, like the video, subscribe to my channel, let me know what you want to see next in the comments. Um, thank you so much for watching. Let me put this down. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.